What's up guys, Robsco here, and this is our current setup, which is going to be changing in a little bit. Right now we've got two monitors, we've got two overhead-ish lights, we have our mic setup, which also includes a mic stand connected to the side desk that also holds our lenses, and we also have our mixer and speakers. The setup has definitely evolved over the past three years since my last video in 2020 where I did an extreme makeover of this entire area. At the end of that video, you saw that I had two monitors from Asus. In the past three years, I've upgraded to another LG monitor that's a high refresh rate with an IPS panel. I ended up with a three monitor setup, which was really nice. Did that for about two years and realized that after a while, it wasn't really working because the desk space just wasn't enough. So I ended up replacing those two Asus monitors with this ultra wide monitor from LG, which also has a very high refresh rate and is also an IPS panel. But once again, we are doing another extreme makeover where we are replacing this desk right here. We've got a new table. It's bigger and better than this table. This table has been great. It's allowed me to make a lot of videos, a lot of good content and giving me a lot of space to work with. But with this new table, it's going to be even better for productivity. I think this change is going to be great. So I'll see you guys at the very end of it to see the differences between this setup right here and our new setup. Check it out. As always, the pain of assembling a new setup is getting rid of the current setup, which is definitely riddled with all sorts of items. Even if I just had to remove my computer peripherals, that would still take a while since there are cables and wires for everything. Like for my monitors, my speakers, my mixer, keyboard, and all that kind of good stuff. And you still have to put them somewhere not inside the room while you build the new setup. I also have a poor habit of leaving things on the table and not putting them where they're supposed to be, which makes cleaning even more tedious. Fortunately, this is an IKEA desk, so it's pretty easy to disassemble and keep all the components intact, so I can actually use this in another room if I wanted to, or just put it in another location. So in our new setup, we're going to be going for a more spacious area, so we're actually taking away the side shelf here despite its usefulness, and we'll be supplementing it with some drawers instead. And pro tip, if you ever plan on getting an open side shelf like this, I'd recommend getting something that has drawers instead, so at least it looks cleaner when you start putting in a bunch of miscellaneous stuff in it, because the mess starts to really build up. Now that this corner is finally cleared up, we can finally bring in our new table which comes from FlexiSpot. So FlexiSpot was gracious enough to send us this desk, and it came with two core pieces and two peripherals. We have the enormous 72 inch bamboo tabletop, the E7B standing desk frame, a cable management tray, and a drawer. This tabletop size is one of their biggest ones yet, so I'm really excited that I get to use it on my new table. But anyways, here are the parts to the table, and it looks surprisingly simple, and it is. For the table itself, you have two motorized stands, an extendable support beam that holds the control panel box, the table mounts, the leg platforms, the interface, and that's it. And putting this frame together was a breeze, because the instructions were simple enough with clear pictures, the tools were nicely organized, and plus, there's a YouTube video to help you in case you need a clearer visual. Everything that's part of the frame itself just uses the Allen key, so you don't need to go around looking for different tools. And this is the 72 inch light bamboo tabletop. Very nice and sturdy, and I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's on the frame. So I built this table on my own and I didn't have any difficulties doing it, but if you're someone who struggles lifting heavy objects, maybe around 70 pounds or so, you'll definitely want to have someone help you out, because when you're lifting the entire table, the combined weight of the frame and the tabletop can be a bit heavy, so it may be a struggle when flipping the table to its upright position. For me, the most difficult part about getting this table done was getting the tabletop screwed in. There are holes pre-drilled into the tabletop so you don't need to drill any holes, but you still have to make sure that you tighten them firmly onto the rubber grommets or they'll start to lift if you put too much weight into the center of the tabletop, which usually happens if you put on a monitor mount. Now the reason why I struggled with this is because this tabletop is not as thick as I would like. It's around 2 centimeters or 6 eighths of an inch, where I would have liked it to be around 3 centimeters to give it a little more heft and rigidity, even though this tabletop is already really strong. Meanwhile, the screws are around 1.5 centimeters, which gave me this internal fear that I would puncture the tabletop if I over tightened the screws. But to be clear, that's not something that will happen, but it's something that just makes me feel uneasy, which is why I prefer a thicker tabletop or shorter screws. Now, in my particular case, because I had such a long tabletop, I had to really stretch the support beams to the maximum length, and the table comes with this cable management tray cover, which also doubles down as a stabilizer bar to keep the table from collapsing on too much weight. And now it's time to flip the table. I actually asked for a C-style frame because I knew how much load I would have on the back of my table where my monitors are, but the regular T-style frame works just the same. 
And just like that, our flexi spot E7 standing table is now complete. And I love the fact that I can now move my table up and down whenever I want to, to fit my needs. But now we're gonna bring everything back onto this table and finish the setup. So let's go. So I didn't want to bore you guys with the process, but here is the full completed setup. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. And I love how clean it looks with all the cable management. Other than the table, everything is pretty much the same. My mixer is still there. I have my mic arm plus my mic. I've got my Verisign keyboard. I have my audio monitors plus my camera lenses. I have a USB hub. And I also have a monitor mount now with two USB ports on the right hand side. So that's really useful. But the thing I really love the most about this new setup is how much space I have underneath the monitors now that I don't have any stands there. I did add my UCS Slave 1 into the corner because it looks kind of cool. The monitors look like they're floating. Cable management in the back looks kind of rough, but as long as it looks clean from the front, it doesn't really matter to me. Now the cable management at the bottom is kind of rough, but it's for a reason. There's a lot of slack because once I put it into the standing position, I want all the cables to be nice and straight, which is why there's so much slack when it's on the sitting position. But it definitely could look a lot better. And to finish off the setup, I did add another Alex drawer because I know how versatile it is. And of course, we can't forget the Desky Ergonomic Pro Plus chair, which I love using so much. Now, the biggest reason why I wanted a super large 72 inch desk here is because I needed the space. Firstly, for length wise, I do have some hefty audio monitors on the left and right. And I also got some huge display monitors in the very center, which is why I need more space. And more importantly, I needed the depth. So over the past few years, my desks have definitely increased in depth because I need more space to work with. Whenever I make my keyboard videos, I have this huge overhead camera frame that takes up over half the depth of the table every time. So I already don't have much space to work with. And even more so because my monitors here were on their default stands and those legs stick out quite a bit because they're so big and it needs to be balanced. Which is why I am super excited now I have a table that can withstand two monitors on a monitor mount so now I have a lot more space to work with and it feels great. Now the best part about a standing desk is that it can move up and down. Whether you want to stand up while working or sit down while working, you have that flexibility. This particular table has four different settings so you can choose whatever height you want it to be. Doesn't really matter if it's sitting or standing. Right now we're at my optimal standing height which is really nice and if I ever want to just sit down, I can just press my sitting height and this table automatically lowers to my particular sitting height where I'm super comfortable. And it's very nice, very quiet, and I really like it. Now, if you're transitioning from a regular stationary desk to a standing desk, there's one thing you need to keep in mind, and that's your monitor cable length. Majority of those cables are not long enough, maybe one meter, 1.5 meters, but when you're extending it up and down, it's not gonna be enough. Especially with the power supply cables of monitors. They're super short, which is why it's definitely recommended to get yourself a really long power bar. So what I would recommend is get yourself some super long cables for your monitors so that you're not tugging on your PC or your monitors because if they're too short, your PC is going to start lifting off the floor once this thing goes up. Originally, I was supposed to use FlexiSpot's cable management tray which goes underneath the table, but you have to drill holes into it. I'm not the biggest fan of drilling, so I tried to use some 3M VHB tape which is some super high bonding tape and I put it on for a couple of hours, tried to put as much pressure as I could initially but after a couple of hours, it just fell off. So I decided not to do that, ended up sticking VHB tape directly onto the power bar themselves, and then stuck it onto the supporting beam. And it's been there ever since, and it's been perfect. I've been using this table for the past two months and I almost have nothing bad to say about it. Other than the fact that I would rather have this tabletop be a little thicker, the functionality of this table, the flexibility and everything has been awesome. And if you're interested in getting your own flexi spot table, I definitely would recommend it right now because it's Black Friday season and they've got some deals where you're saving a bit of money when you're buying your tables. So check the links down below. But this is it. This is the new setup for 2023 going to 2024. I'm excited to make some new videos for you guys. I know I've been away for a lot of months this year just because I've had a full time job and now transitioning back into YouTube is a crazy struggle. So I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.